Howdy. So as you can see, we're drawing four and a half amps. We're at 53.6 volts. The grow watt is charging, but we've got one of those days where the sky is just not great for solar. So anyhow, there is 24,000 BTU EG4 mini split sitting there doing nothing today because there's just not enough sun. But anyhow, so it is 10 to 3. It's Thursday, November 6th. Anyhow, <clears throat> I wired up that array. I'll show you what I've done to try and maximize my power. Now, okay, one thing, obviously, right there. We have retired the beer fridge for the winter. Let it thaw out out here and drip out. I don't need to uh, have that drawn uh, about an, one and a half amps overnight when it's basically empty. The beers can sit out outside for the rest of the season. It's going to start getting really cold next week. So this system has not been on at all today. As I've said before, I've got, actually it ended up being eight and eight. So eight panels, 250 watts. Uh, 37.6 volts times 8 is 300 plus 20% allotment for uh, cold weather voltage increase. That puts me to 360, 360 volts. This is rated for 380 max intake or input DC power. Don't want to blow the unit up. So, you know, longer term, like I said in a previous video, I want to maybe invest in some new panels. Six times 500 at uh, 40 volts. That'll give you 240 max. Still have to cut this line in to this unit. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll get that done this afternoon or today. So I'll show you how I've got these strung up. <clears throat> Now, this is just a chaotic mess right now, rat's nest. I wanted to make sure that it was gonna work. So I put out a post and I put in another post. So we've got eight, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, all strung in one series. And what I've got going on is This is our positive of this series of eight, these panels. So eight of them are strung together. We've got eight going into a Y. And then the negative side, got the same. So that's going into this one. Put these Ys on. One, one positive, one negative, one positive, one negative. So these are the DC disconnects I bought when I bought the EG4 uh, heat pumps. And then I seen these on Amazon those are pretty pricey. Not too bad on Amazon. I think about 50, 55 bucks. This I think was 38 bucks. It's a breaker. 32 amp. But the same thing really. This is a full on disconnect. This one's a breaker. They do the same thing. So what's going on is this unit. And it's a mirror image over there. That's exactly the same setup. Eight panels over there. 
going in into the far side and into this side so if this is off and this is on which you can see it's on right now because the thing is when you're looking at those 16 panels and they're both strung to heat pumps that one and that one that 16 panels that are sitting there if you have a cloudy crappy day like today there's just not enough juice to turn them on you need at least 500 to keep it running continuous and today was one of those days well actually that one there running to the house it ran for about three hours put some good heat in the house and keeps the furnace from coming on the shop uh, the weather was a little better than the weather network said it was gonna be so I chose to <clears throat> turn off the shop heat pump close it and open that line to the shop to the shop batteries so these lines here run down along over to that end these two run directly to the heat pump and these two run to my battery charging system so if this one's off and this one's on I'm charging batteries if this one's off and this one's on I'm running my heat pump so I've got that set up times two and then the four panels down on the far end kind of the leftovers because there's 20 panels here 250 watt <clears throat> they got a 37.6 open circuit voltage so yeah same setup here exactly the same as that one over there <clears throat> so they're running into and I got these three-way so the disconnects that run to the heat pumps to these they have their own line these this set runs directly to the heat pump it's got nothing to do with the shop this one runs to the shop so I have <clears throat> the option now I could turn on both heat pumps obviously there's a bit of a you know I'm not an electrician so you know this is totally off grid you can't do this sort of stuff if you're grid connected but if it's a crappy day I can turn off both my heat pumps turn on 16 panels and feed that through this triple feed so I have four panels one series and I have eight panels and I have eight panels all running into this line that line runs down and feeds into the shop so that'll charge batteries in a low light I mean this is a rat's nest bird's nest a mess here right now so I need to clean this up but I wanted to just try it out to see if it would work and it is working right now I have everything because yesterday was horrible horrible rainy miserable day about as as dark as can be like that but a hundred percent of the sky just dark so even with everything strung together I was only getting like 150 watts which is basically just holding off this consumption the grow watt uses about 70 watts continuous that mini split transformer so that converts the 240 output those green lines that run in and then from there 
that breaker runs up to the mini split and that excuse me sends the power back and it makes two lines of 120 so usable house power so that's kind of the setup so yeah look at this right now 1.2 amps coming in 53.6 on the batteries So we've actually got 470, 460 watts coming in. We're using 288. So the leftovers, this is going into the battery, the excess. Now I could shut off. Like these two shop lights are 30 watts each. They're LEDs. I can turn that switch off. Let's let this focus. Oh, no, that's up. No, oh, the sky's opening up a little bit. But you'll see, right... Hold on, let me wait till that levels out. Oh, it's dropping. So 2.4, 2.2. Oh, this is uh, making... Up. Yeah, it drops. Turn the lights off. And it goes back up. So that's just a draw. So currently, like I said yesterday, was horrible, horrible day for solar. So we're at 84%, only a half. 6.69 amp 61 going into the batteries you know not even enough to get those lights flashing it says they're they're full of them older batteries these newer ones got a lot more info in them it's pretty nice so hopefully I get a few more bursts sunshine coming in <clears throat> four days in can't count on it but so just another way you can you know if you have panels dedicated to these heat pumps which that was kind of the original intent is have your panels dedicated to just powering that but you know what when there's no sunlight You've got all those panels sitting there that are doing absolutely nothing for you. And when the light is low, uh, I have the luxury of being at home four days a week. I can watch it, manage it, watch the sky, decide what I want to do. You know, if I want to boost my batteries or run heat pumps, obviously the, the string that runs up to the house that's a priority keep my gas bill down minimized anyways so so yeah so that's the setup uh, like I say you wouldn't do this sort of thing if you're uh, at all looking for permits on a dwelling on a home in other words this is totally off-grid it just runs this shop um, I am considering putting some AC lines to power this unit from the batteries potentially or running an AC line off the circuit in the home to the outdoor unit at the house. Might be worth it, but before I do anything, I want to make sure. You know, you don't want to do anything that's going to invalidate your insurance for your property, that's for sure. So I just got to check into the, all the rules and all of that and see if I can get an electrician to just run a circuit to the second unit I have at the house and uh, keep it running longer throughout the day. You get those puffy clouds that come by and your unit just suddenly clicks off because you got cut off at the knees and then the sun's back out and they don't turn on immediately. There seems to be a little window in there. It's looking for enough voltage for a 
certain period of time before it turns back on. So, anyways, learning as we go. Lots of fun, though. <clears throat> Ridiculous amount of time connecting up all the MC4 connectors, though. <laughs> you get real good at, at it after a while. But it's such a, an assembly of connections. It's like, oh, you make the wrong one, you got to cut a line and put a new one on. And uh, anyways, it's fun. All right. And we're getting late in the day. I don't see 100% power coming in, but that's the way she goes. All right, take care, bye for now.